Mr. Sumner, I named my son after Elvis using his, his middle name, Aaron. And I spelled it A-R-O-N, just like what I'd always seen on Elvis's birth certificate and all of his official records. But then, why then was his middle name, Aaron, spelled A-A-R-O-N on his gravestone? Because we had seen, uh, I mean, uh, certainly at the time of his uh, birth in Tupelo, Mississippi, they would have known how to spell his name. Well, of course, you got to imagine that Vernon Presley uh, didn't know uh, when he, when he, when this was spelt with two A's on the grave marker, the tombstone. Uh, I doubt that Vernon even noticed it. Vernon Presley uh, was an ignorant man. And don't misunderstand me when I say ignorant. Stupid is one thing and ignorant is another. An uh, ignorant man can learn. A stupid man can never learn nothing. But uh, I would not have known how to spell Aaron. And I doubt that uh, Vernon knew how to spell Aaron. In fact, I didn't even know Elvis's name was Aaron until he passed away. It was always Elvis to me. But uh, the guy that made the tombstone was not apparently a fan like you was. That's you spelled it A-R-O-N. If you ask me how to spell Aaron, that's the way I spell Aaron. But the guy that made the tombstone, and I doubt very seriously that Vernon ever knew how it was spelled on the birth certificate or uh, even cared how it was spelled on the tombstone. But Mr. Sumner, why was the picture that was taken of the body within the casket? That didn't look like the Elvis we knew. Well, of course, uh, that was supposed to have been made by one of the cousins. Uh, and the question has come up that it didn't look like Elvis, uh, that his nose was flat and uh, that it, of course, Elvis didn't look like he did when he was alive. Uh, Elvis died. Uh, he was on his knees and his elbows and his face was in the rug. Elvis had a massive heart attack. He lay there for about two and a half or three hours before he was found in that position. And by that, that time, the body deteriorates and certainly uh, when uh, by the time they found Elvis, rigor mortis had already set in. So his face was already shaped as to where a funeral home could not do anything about the looks. And then Elvis had an autopsy, which will change the looks of a body. Uh, he had the type of autopsy, uh, post-autopsy, that uh, everything is removed from the body. So this deteriorates the looks of a body. Had it been me, I would have never opened the casket. But Vernon came from the old school, the same as I did when my mother passed away. They asked me, uh, did I want, said Mr. Sumner, it's customary now that we don't open the casket at the f church during the funeral, but it's up to you. I said, the casket will be open. Uh, Vernon should have kept the casket closed, but instead of that, Vernon had the casket open for everybody to see. There was 80,000 people that came through uh, to view the body after it was placed at Graceland. Now the thing to do, in the old days, you brought the body home, and people set up with it. The same thing happened to Elvis because Vernon was from the old school. Now people don't do that. Elvis was brought home to Graceland. He was put in the foyer uh, of Graceland, and people were allowed by the thousands to come by and view Elvis Presley. And uh, it could have been easily that the casket could have been closed. It could have been a closed funeral. Even I would not have been able to have attended the funeral if uh, had it had been a hoax 
or anything pertaining to a hoax. But Elvis Presley was dead. His casket was open. Thousands of people saw him. All the people at the funeral that day saw him. I felt of his hand. I know that Elvis Presley is dead. Well, I guess sadly all of us in this room and everybody who has listened to this tape surely know by now that with you being there and you being in charge of the funeral, it's true that the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, is dead. But as we close this series of tapes, uh, tell us something funny. Well, of course, uh, when you was around Elvis, well, everything was funny. Uh, because if he wanted to be funny, uh, you laughed whether it was funny or not. Uh, but we were, I was in Tucson, Arizona, singing at a little Baptist church. Got a telephone call uh, from Elvis. He traced me down through calling my wife at home and finding out where I was at. He traced me down and uh, wanted me and the stamped quartet to come to Denver to sing at a funeral. And, of course, we had dates every night, so he sent, he said, my uh, jet star is on the way to pick you up. There wasn't any question of whether I was going or not. The plane was already on the way. So at that time, I had a boy singing bass by the name of Larry Strickland. So I left Larry with the bus to drive it to the next date over in New Mexico. Uh, the Stamp Quartet got on the plane. We went to Denver. We sang at the funeral. After the funeral was over, uh, of course, uh, Elvis came to the funeral dressed as a policeman. He had a police uniform on. He and Linda and uh, came to the funeral, and Elvis was supposedly a policeman. After the funeral was over, Elvis said, I want you to stay with me. But when he wanted you to do something, you did it. I stayed with him. And the quartet was sent back to finish filling the dates that needed to be done on that tour. I waited in my room, as you always did, for uh, to see what Elvis, uh, what he wanted, or if he wanted anything, or whatever. I just waited in the room until I... I was almost starving to death, so I decided I was going down to the coffee shop and have supper. I went down and had supper, eat as fast as I could, come back up, and as I was approaching my room, I heard a telephone ringing. I run, unlock the door, and uh, sure enough, it was my phone ringing, and it was Elvis. Elvis said, uh, let's go and eat. <laughs> I said, well, it just so happens uh, I have just uh, have come from the coffee shop, Elvis. I have just eaten. He said, I don't care what you've done. I said, let's go and eat. <laughs> I said, I had no idea I was that hungry. Yeah, but, still uh, hungry. <laughs> I am starving to death. Let's go. <laughs> we went to a restaurant, which I can't name the restaurant in Denver. Uh, of course, the limousine was ready when we got downstairs. And we went to a restaurant to eat. He also had on a police uniform. We went out and eat, and uh, while we were eating, of course, he took his cap off at the table. Because that's the way he was raised. And uh, what he ordered, what I ordered, was lobster and steak because there was, wasn't that much lobster and steak to what I could get it down some way without it <laughs> looking bad. So, uh, But what Elvis ordered was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> and it cost $18. And uh, while we were eating, a man came over to Elvis and said, pardon me, sir, but you can settle an argument between the wife and I. Said, uh, are you him? Now, who was him? He didn't say, are you Elvis? He said, are you him? Elvis said, no. And he said, well, you certainly look like him. Elvis said, well, I've been told that a lot of times. That was the only way that he was bothered during the meal. We got through and came on home after uh, 
this stay in Denver. Of course, during this stay, uh, Elvis was in a giving away Cadillac mood, is what I call it. He had given away Cadillacs to the police department, to different policemen in Denver. And uh, we were watching the news uh, in his suite, and the little guy on, that was uh, the anchor man for the news said, well, our friend Elvis is still at it. He has now given away a total of 12 Cadillacs. <laughs> and he said, uh, by the way, Elvis, uh, when you get mine, I want a black sedan Seville. And Elvis said, give me the phone. And I said, my God, what's the man going to do? So he called the Cadillac man and said, I want a, a black sedan Seville at the TV station uh, by the time this guy gets off the air. The Cadillac man got the, the Cadillac to the TV station. When he came off the air, they had the cameras and all ready. They took him on the outside and the Cadillac was there waiting for him, the one that he had asked for just a few minutes before. Well, what was Elvis Presley doing? He was producing his own television show from the hotel. And I was sitting there saying, my God, why in the name of God don't he give me that Cadillac? Because <laughs> I was driving a Pinto at the time. But that's the way that he enjoyed life. But we came on home Elvis, uh, apparently, when he was a young boy, well, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches was his favorite. So he woke up one uh, afternoon and uh, at Graceland, and he wanted a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at this restaurant. He called his pilot, Milo, and got the crew together, got on the Lisa Marie, uh, the big airplane flew to Denver. I know personally I seen the receipt for the fuel. It cost $8,000 to fly the Lisa Marie from Memphis to Denver. He got on the plane, flew to Denver, got him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and flew back to Graceland. <laughs> that peanut butter and jelly sandwich cost him $16,018. And I would have personally made him uh, an arm load and walked him over to Memphis from Nashville here for a hundred dollars. Miss Sumner, this lady said she took pictures of Elvis hiding in the back bathhouse. Well, uh, whoever said they made pictures of him uh, did not make pictures of Elvis Presley. Now, the photo that I seen, uh, supposedly, as somebody implied that it was Elvis sat behind this uh, screen door, looking out over the swimming pool and the meditation garden. Uh, anything can be done with trick photography. Uh, you can take a picture and put it with another picture and screen one of them back and make it sort of hazy. Uh, that whoever said they took a picture of Elvis Presley uh, lied because Elvis Presley was dead and there's no way that he could have been sitting behind that chair unless Jesus has done it again. Uh, there's only been two people that's been raised from the dead. That was Lazarus and Jesus Christ. And uh, Elvis Presley's dead. So that nobody took a picture of him. That picture is also a hoax. Thank you, Mr. Sumner, for your time and your insight into this subject. We appreciate it very much.